So what I'm, I'm speaking about in the next maybe 15 minutes, because I want to use, us to use some time to pray, is please know I'm going to use time well. My thing is misbehaving, but I have notes elsewhere. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. The Bible says, and he blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. 126, so let's go to 128. And he blessed them, saying, He spoke a word, saying, Be fruitful. And the blessing unto them, be fruitful, meaning bear fruit. And when you have got the fruit, you have spiritual sons and daughters, you can then multiply them. You cannot multiply air. You multiply that which you've produced. And then when you have multiplied, you can fill the earth. The earth can never be filled without multiplication. And the principal way through which we multiply is through mission of communities, which are evangelistic tools where every week people go on mission out together to fish and bring those that are yet to come into the kingdom of God, to bring them to the kingdom of God. And when we have filled the earth, which means we are everywhere, the earth means everywhere. That means when you have your sons and daughters everywhere, you can then bring that territory under your subjugation. You can then say, because I have a church in Chirinyaga, I have, we are taking over Chirinyaga. I have heard of pastors saying, we are eating up this city, but they only have one church in that city and they have a handful of disciples. So the only way you can subdue the earth is when you have many sons and daughters in many places. And when you have subdued the earth, then you can have dominion over it, and dominion is being able to bring the kingdom of heaven in that particular place. The reason why people are not going out to make disciples is because they are safe where they are but then they don't know that it is not safe where they are because people out there are not safe. We need to bring the dominion of our king into many territories by bearing children and multiplying them and filling the earth and then subduing it. The Bible says, and then you have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that creep, that creeps on the earth. In that scripture there, you know, I teach people and tell them that because God knew that the serpent would come, he had to include that in. That by the way, even the snake, you have dominion over it. Everything that creeps. And that scripture is a relative to the scripture in Matthew 28 verse 19, verse 18. They are brothers. That one, that command, is the same as the other command in Matthew 28. Because the Bible begins by saying, and he blessed them and he spoke. This one, therefore, Matthew 18 says, then Jesus also came to them and he spoke. That, the other one was a blessing. This one is also was a blessing. He said, I'm giving you all the authority and all, all the authority in heaven and on earth. Only if you go. You don't have spiritual authority if you are not going. The reason why you can find a 14-year-old, 15-year-old having such kind of spiritual authority is because they're on the mission. There is no way God can deny that person that authority. God does not waste. He makes available spiritual authority. And spiritual authority is also rela related to how many disciples you're making. The number of disciples you have is the amount of spiritual authority available for you. So whichever vessel you take to the well, it is what you decide to have for yourself. I firmly believe you can't have a handful of disciples and have the anointing to lead 500 people. 
it is in the obedience. Baptizing them in the name of teaching them, obey, making disciples. Disciples are made. They don't, you don't wake up and find them on the doorway. They are wrapped in a baby, whatever, with, with a tag disciple. God rewards you for making disciples. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 127 from verse 3 and says that children are a, a heritage, an inheritance. And it says that they are from the Lord and that they are fruit of the womb, the fruit of the womb, giving birth to spiritual children, multiple, giving birth, producing spiritual children is a reward for obedience and diligence. So what you get for the labor, that's why it's called the labor. What you get for the labor is a reward for diligence. You cannot have children without some union having been there. There's an effort for which God rewards you for. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And the Bible says that like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. The best time to produce is when you're young. That's why in their age, they are able to make disciples. The best time for a church to give birth to another church is when it's in youthful, youthful age, age. Because when the church grows older, the older it grows, the more reluctant to obeying God in planting other churches. So the Bible says that like arrows in the hands of a warrior, arrows are a tool, an instrument that goes further when you are not there. You shoot it from here and it goes to Machakos. And they don't see the one who has shot the arrow, but they will feel the impact of the arrow. And the Bible says that like arrows in the hands of a warrior, some Bible verses say skillful warrior. And an arrow is an instrument. God is using military language here. When it comes to the mission, it is military language. Members can never grow in a church. They are actually the problem of every local church. Because just when you want to take people to go and fulfill the Great Commission, members don't want the church to go out. Because the mission is compromising on their lukewarmness. Like arrows in the hands of a skillful warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Not sure if I'm a blessing or I'm shaking some tables. <laughs> So, we know that it's in God's interest to preserve you through children. Your impact will last ages through children. When God blesses you with children, you are loved to the degree that you are rewarded for your obedience. Children are rewards, obedience and diligence in responding to the Great Commission. Children come from the womb, but we know that there's a process of getting them. It's our engagement in that process that is rewarded. When obedience is your response, God grants you the children. They are already inside of you as Abmo teaches us, but you need obedience and diligence to manifest them. Deuteronomy 28 verse 4 says, If you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commands that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, blessed shall, be, blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground. When you want to have impact from a distance, you don't go about sharpening spears. There is a tool which you can aim from afar. Arrows can exert impact instantly and when, strug when one struggles with it, it has the capacity of inflicting more harm. The best way to deal with an arrow is to slowly, with much care, cut it out. You will be with impact, I prophesy. Yeah. They will struggle to uproot you where you will be sent. Yeah. 
So because you don't send spears, you send arrows. Do we have some heavy spears here? Spears are heavy, and if you want to send a spear, you have to send it from a distance. The person can see that you are throwing a spear to them. But with an arrow, you can be in an invisible place and send the arrow. The impact will still be felt. There is a reason why children are called arrows. When our children are playing with your children, they are not playing, they are doing evangelism. Because in these later days, it's going to be difficult for you to come with your tongue-speaking Bible that is carried. They will say, that's an evangelist. But you send people who the world despises, you will reap the harvest. Because they can never think of them as leather, but they are the most potent weapon in this season. Spears are heavy and you have to be close to have impact. Actually, the closer the spear, the more the impact. With the arrow, the further you stretch it, the more impact and the force of destruction. I hope that you are aware that this is military jargon, not civilian slang. With the spears, you have the sender who will be easily identified. With arrows, you only know that you have been hit with something deadly. The Bible has just called children or young people arrows. And this is what I'm trying to explain. The arrow must be stretched to have impact. If sons are arrows, they must allow to be stretched to reach far. How much are you willing to allow to be stretched? How much you are willing to allow to be stretched will determine how much impact and how far you will go. Your impact as an arrow is dependent on you allowing to be stretched. The second thing, or whatever, the third thing is that an arrow has to be released. The arrow doesn't release itself. The arrow is sent. Instruments that send themselves never have impact. The Bible says, happy, blessed, and fortunate is the man whose case of arrows, the quiver, is filled with them. They will not be put to shame when they speak to their adversaries in gatherings in the city gates. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about children, that they are like arrows in the hands of a skillful warrior. We have these weapons. The Bible says that um, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 that we are in a war and how often I think about this war and how we are going to win the war. Shaka Zulu entrusted his mission to children. Yes, in Uganda we have a government that has been in power for some time. And one of the ways that they were able to have an edge over the others is that they deployed children in their war, who were called Kadogos. These were carrying food and doing whatever, reconnaissance mission. They provided information. The church has all the human resources we have, but we are not getting these people engaged because we are happy to, ha to feel youthful, but not to deploy them on the mission. I'd like to challenge us to rise up on the occasion and to get our young people involved because they can win quite a lot for us. Amen. Amen. You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. And the Bible says who, when you're a soldier, gets entangled in civilian affairs. Now, whether you like it or not, you're a soldier, you're on the mission then the demons assigned against you are aware that you are a soldier. They mark you by the spirit that you carry. And when you start getting entangled in, entangled in civilian affairs, you are putting your life at risk. We need to start these DGs, these missional communities, for us to be able to win. But also we have these young soldiers that we can deploy on the mission. We send them, they are sendable, they are also bendable. One of the things that the devil does is that he makes young people become a problem before us, yet they are such a great treasure. He uses their age of transition. 
he comes and starts to sell them ideas. And the church is not selling to them ideas. The men and women who brought the gospel to us made sacrifices. They sacrificed their youthful age to come and bring the gospel to us. All throughout this morning, I've been listening to messages preached and the eternity, the future is in mind. We need to have the future in mind. The best way to protect our children and to protect the work that God has begun is to engaging our young people. Not selling them the lie of you can have an easy life. That we need to introduce them to the gospel and the occupationers that's involved as early as possible. I send the young people out on missions, deadly missions, and they bring the harvest. The details of which include going into shrines and discipling children of witch doctors. The reason why they carry such spiritual authority is because they know the thing that they are going to counter when, where, when they go there. Every week they are being filled with the Holy Ghost. Every week they are being empowered. I'm laying hands on them. I'm praying for them every week because I know that what they're involved with is spiritual warfare. Taking territory is spiritual warfare. Wherever you have your sons and daughters, you are going to need to contend with the spiritual forces that have enslaved that territory. They are called principalities. And you need to have people who are empowered to do that. God has, in his wisdom, given us a revival. And them that are prepared for this, the Lord is going to use them mightily. Especially our young people. If God is going to bring a revival on the African continent, there are 75% of his population young. God is looking at our young people. We can't be talking about the revival minus our young people. We need to radically engage them. We need to radically get them involved. We need to get them on the mission. We don't need to sell them the idea of an easy Christianity. They are a tool in the hands of skillful warriors. They can be deployed on the mission to reach the farthest ends of the earth. The things that we can't do, they can do. Let me just give you maybe one or two advantages of young people. One is that they have a bigger social network. Number two, that it is their time. As you are calling TikTok, talk tick. They understand the times and they know how to maneuver and get us to win. The only thing that we have to sell to them is the goal. How we get there, let us leave it to them. You tell them I need 200 people, they will bring them. They will literally drag them. They know how to speak to their colleagues. They know how to bring the fruit to us. Hallelujah. Is that thing thing? My time is over. I need a, just one, just, just one, one, one. So, these young people um, can help us win if we engage them. Now, when we put all our efforts on the ancestors. <laughs> Because we say, we have this common language at our church. Beyond a certain age, you are ancestors. Because the average age of a Kenyan is 19, and the average age of a Ugandan is 16. So you know that a, typ a typical Ugandan is 16, a typical Kenyan is 19. So beyond that, people are ancestors. All right. Now, King Saul, please allow me to finish because I'm going to pray. King Saul gave David tools of engagement. He gave him his, his armor and his sword. And they told him, look here, King David, David, you are going to fight Goliath, but would you use this garment? And David said, man of God, this thing can't work with me. But only if you allow me, use my things, 
I have been using them in the wilderness. Allow me use what I have. One of the best ways to engage young people is not to, to, to force our ways on them. Because you are going to have Holy Spirit filled, tongue speaking, demon chasing men of God who wear dreadlocks, who have tattered jeans. And listen to me, that is principally one of the ways they are going to help us enter into those territories and wreak havoc and bring the harvest. If we decide for them the tools to use, we want them to use the spears, which are heavy for them to carry. We want them to put on those long garments. The things we've had, which have not helped us defeat witchcraft and religion. Why don't we let them use what they have for as long as we are able to defeat the Philistines? Hallelujah. You might think I'm very wise. You just go read the book called To Greatness. It's all in there. It's one of the books Apmo has written called To Greatness. So the people we despise are the people who are going to bring victory for us. But we need to av avoid the temptation of wanting to force them to use the tools we have used. One of the beautiful things at Grace City Church is that we've adapted the missional communities to our own different communities. Missional communities happen at local wells. That's where they gather. They happen in schools. They happen at um, some at church buildings. Others, they happen in, uh, at the garden. Because these young people, they, all, all that they want is, I have my people, I've led them to salvation. Where it happens doesn't matter. Church is not a, a building with a cross and stained glasses. Church can happen everywhere, anywhere. We are struggling with churches that are not growing because we have not engaged the right people. They look at us and they're like, if only you knew that we can help. And they see us struggling with our staff. They need to be given purpose. They need to be given an opportunity. How about engaging our young people and loving them to the point that we can let them do what we want. Let's just sell to them the end goal. Let's leave the rest to them. They can help us win. There is a big temptation to want to force them to do things our way. When you let them, they will amaze you. They will amaze you. They will do things and God is working through them. Obedience helps unlock supernatural power and authority. They are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. And God is saying, where are those that are ready, that are used? And they are saying, here we are. And because of that, God has dispatched immense spiritual resources for them to accomplish the mission. There are places we can't reach because the moment they see you, they will block you. But there are places where they can go and they can thrive. Because... Pharaoh has to be raised up in the palace for him to release our people. Moses. Moses has to be raised up in the palace for, in Pharaoh's palace so that he can release our people. So we can get these young people into spaces and then they bring many into the kingdom.